Good evening, kindred and kind. Welcome back to the Near Dark Society's Vampire the Masquerade. V5, Chicago by Night Chronicle. It's been a while. Hope you've enjoyed the special two-part season 3.5 that we released just a few weeks ago. And if you haven't caught up on that, it is already up on YouTube. Now, before we get into season four, I'm sure you all are eagerly awaiting to sink your teeth into. I'd like to introduce Chadworth Bennington. Chadworth <laughs> Bennington. Wow, that is actually my, that's my actual name. Uh, Chad. Thanks for doxing me, man. To, uh, to the stream, who will be playing a, uh, a new Coterie member mm -hmm. for our Chicago Chronicle. So, glad to have you, Chad. Thank I, you. I uh, hope you enjoy your time here. I, I... He won't. <laughs> You know, with these with these guys, it's gonna be a, a difficult. But uh, you know, I play with them regularly on Death. I will I say, with this coterie and you being uh, brought in, and the fact that your name also starts with A L, um, <laughs> may God have mercy on your soul. Um, so, second off, I want to do a little bit of a uh, recap of the events of the year 2020. Hold on, stay with me. Don't leave. <laughs> Don't take us back there. <laughs> Through the pandemic, COVID-19 has wreaked havoc all across the globe. And in the Chronicle of Chicago by Night, it was not easy for the kindred either. Kevin Jackson worried that masquerade breaches could be easily discovered through thermometer checks at doorways, mandatory doctor visits, COVID tests, he restricted pretty much all movement throughout the city for the entire year of 2020. If you didn't go out to feed, you stayed home. It is now July 4th, 2021, Independence Day, here in the United States. And tonight is a celebration. Kevin is calling court to celebrate the uh, winding down of the pandemic and kind society returning to normal and thus releasing his restrictions on the city. However, throughout 2020, some kindred have turned up dead. Mysterious cases all throughout the city. Both the Anarchs and the Camarilla point fingers towards each other. No evidence on either side. But both suspect the other. Kevin has been growing more irate or agitated, ready to show an example of his power. While the Anarchs feel as though Kevin is letting the city slip through his fingers. And that if they don't step up and claim Chicago as an anarch city and dub a baron, then First Light or whatever other threat may come will be sure to take Chicago for themselves. So, before we get started, why don't we go around the table and introduce our kindred? Starting over here. All right, it's your boy Memphis Piper. Uh, for the first time, uh, I guess uh, Alexander Kaminsky. And your clan? Clan Lasombra. Imagine that. <laughs> I'm Marilyn Alcott, playing Clan Malkavian. Uh, Doctor Irwin Ruth, Clan Tremere. And I will be Quentin Helgeson, and I will be your storyteller for tonight and this chronicle. So. Thank you all, and how about we enjoy tonight's episode with a new intro of Chicago by Night.
Elysium has been called for tonight. Everyone in the city is expected to arrive. You have some time before the event. However, Memphis, you're already there. It's taking place at the Succubus Club. In fact, you're supposed to be tonight's main attraction. And Kevin has personally requested your audience here before the event. It looks as though he's been wanting to speak with you. You've been keeping in touch throughout the year, but you're also aware that his mother is still in his company. And as of right now, you are aware that she is currently still kind. But you've started to suspect and wonder why Kevin is keeping your mother around. Right. Besides for obvious reasons. Wait, which obvious reasons? The fact that your mother is in an intimate relationship with Kevin Jackson. No, no. They're friends. Very close friends. <laughs> so. We'll start the night with you, Memphis. You're already at the Succubus Club. People have been setting up the stage, getting uh, amps and your DJ equipment ready for tonight's show. And tonight is also a very special night for you as well. Kevin specifically said that he has a major surprise for you. Awesome. Do I know what it is? You don't know. He wanted to, he's been keeping it very hush hush. Got you, got you. So, what'd you like to do? Alright. So while uh, everyone's setting up, because I mean I really want to make sure this is a good show. I'll probably be down there, like helping, coaching everyone, where to put everything, and how I see it, painting my perfect show. For the Succubus Club. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. So at this point, you realize that you actually see Kevin on the second floor. Mm -hmm. You can see him staring through the VIP window. He looks down towards you. You notice that he makes eye contact with you and kind of gives you a head nod as he turns back. Sort of seems like he may be insinuating he wants to speak with you. All right, well, then I'll stop what I'm doing and make my way up. Okay. Your short walk up to the VIP section. You realize that Kevin's in there sitting down, already waiting for you. Memphis, my boy. Come on in. Take a seat. Of uh, course. I'll, I'll s walk in there and sit. <clears throat> You know, one of these times, we're going to have a conversation that's not going to feel fucking awkward. Yeah. Apparently, that, that's not tonight. No, no, no. Well, I got some good news for you. I heard you had a surprise. It is. It's a big surprise, and it took a lot of... A lot of chain yanking to get this done. All right. You did it. You got the flying bus from Fortnite. A real one. What the fuck? What the f No. You talking about a video game? No, in real life. So I can fly in on that jump out parachute down to my shows. You said it was a big surprise. It is a big surprise. You just, I didn't realize you were expecting a flying bus. I thought you have been reading my journal, and that's what you meant by the surprise. <laughs> nope. I, I was really excited about this. All right, well, why don't you just sit down? All right, just shut the fuck up. All right, well, what do you... Besides for a fucking flying bus, I'll tell you what I got you. I pulled some strings, I got a hold of some contacts, and I paid a lot of money. But I'm getting your death scrapped. Memphis Piper is gonna be alive again. Really? Now, there's going to be some legal things, and there's going to be some issues, but... 
Oh my gosh. We're, we're staging, we're staging your death as a publicity stunt for a rebranding. And at this it's point- genius. Right, genius. So, I want you to know that tonight is gonna be a big reveal for you. We're gonna go ahead and record everything. We're not gonna do it live because I really don't trust you to do something live. Oh, right, right, yeah, no. But we're gonna record it and then we're gonna air it once it's edited, of course, to the world. The Return of Memphis Piper. Or Miles, or whatever you want to go as. Oh, no, no. We'll go by... Memphis Fang. Memphis Fang. Yeah. All right. So you really you really embracing the whole vampire thing. No, that's what I was thinking since it's a publicity stunt. And I'm coming back from the dead. What's a better idea than vampire rapper? You know what? You got a point. Yeah. You notice that Annabelle and the other Primogens are sitting in the room as well, and they haven't said a single word. They're just silently watching. Then I can't mess up. I, you know what? I, I, I'm glad that you're excited now. So Yeah, why, it's so smart. Why don't you go ahead and head down and uh, get ready for the show? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to. Right. I'll get out and I'll run down to the as stage. As you leave, Kevin then turns and looks back <laughs> toward the Primogen. Now I know what you're all thinking. They all kind of, Annabelle just, you're an idiot. This is gonna backfire, you know it. Now, now, wait a minute, hold on. We all know Memphis is gonna fuck up at some point. Now, you could just get rid of him like any other kindred. I'm not gonna get rid of him, all right? I've made a fucking promise. He's my responsibility, so I'm gonna take care of it. Now, that's the last I'm gonna hear of that. My point being is we all know he's gonna fuck up. We all know he's gonna break the masquerade. So if we make his whole goddamn identity the point of breaking the masquerade, he can't fuck up. You know, it's pretty us. The philosophy there kind of makes sense, I suppose. I guess we'll, uh, we'll just have to see how uh, this all unfolds, Kevin. But I'll give you, uh, I would applaud for the ingenuity. Now, good. No, I don't want anything else going wrong tonight. Now, we're gonna go ahead and change scenes. Your dad's very protective of you, Memphis. <laughs> He's not my dad. <laughs> like it? It's Alec. Yes. You are being picked up by the side of your apartment. It's in a pretty shitty part of town. I believe it's in the West End. Mm -hmm. Crime rate is through the roof where you're at. There's nightly shootings and not a night that goes by where you don't hear the sound of emergency sirens and pretty much everything you could possibly imagine. You hear a knock on your door. I'm going to let out a breath and stand up and go over and look through the peephole first just to be safe. You look through the peephole, you notice that there appears to be a young uh, black male. You recognize him immediately. It's Damien. You can see him sporting his baby choir shirt. Kyle looking both ways down the hallway. I'm going to go ahead and open it. Hey, Damien, what's up? Uh, Prince told me to come pick you up. You ready? No, but I uh, don't have a choice, do I? And I'm going to walk out and shut the door behind me and lock it. You know, <clears throat> you actually lock your door here? Man, you know, why not? I've been broken into like four times this past month, so, you know, it, it makes me feel better. Hey, man. Keep this up, though. Maybe Kevin might move you to a different spot. That's the goal. Alright, follow me, my ride's outside. I'm gonna go ahead and follow him. You follow him, Damien gets into his car and begins to drive off. As he's driving, you know, he's hand on the wheel, looks over towards you. You ever been in a, like a coterie before? Not really, no. 
Yeah, you haven't really been like around a lot of other kindred, have you? Only ones I'm told to be around. You know how that is. <laughs> yeah. Why you ask? Well, I know you're new in the city. I know you, uh, La Sombra don't have a lot of numbers. Sierra's pushing for more of you to join, but Kevin's still, you know, understandably leery. I get that. You know, I've been around a lot of the older ones, so it is what it is. <sighs> you haven't heard or seen anything from that quack tally, right? No, I've just heard the name, but, you know, I never met the guy. All right. It's like a ghost to me, you know what I mean? It's a lot worse than a fucking ghost. Listen, Kevin's got something pretty big for you tonight. And this is really going to be your make it or break it. Uh, if you do well with this and you show him that you're faithful to the cam, I think you're going to have a nice spot here. Honestly, Alec, you seem like a nice guy. Yeah, you know, it's just... I just don't want to be followed by his guys anymore, you know? Like, that's that's it. That's why I'm just... Trust me, I don't want to follow you anymore either. You're fucking boring. Yeah, you know. I try to be. <laughs> I don't want to do much around her, man. All right. Well, when we get there, I'll take you up to Kevin. And, um... All I can say is be patient. It's the best thing you can do in this moment. Yeah, I've been patient this entire time. And I'm going to turn my head and just look out the window as we drive. All right. We're going to transfer over to Dr. Irwin Ruth. You're going to go ahead and leave work early. You've been working at Terra Cryo for pretty much the last year. During the pandemic, that skyscraper was put up real fast. You're not sure who Alistair hired for the construction, but they got it done quickly. And it's an impressive building. You also know that it's technically the main base of operation for the territory that Kevin gave your coterie. And you've been essentially over observing everything since then. Is there anything you want to do before you wrap up work and leave? Uh, just check all all my uh, all my tests are going uh, as smoothly as they were or have been, um, and then uh, yep, that's, that's about all I want to do. Okay. And as you wrap up for work, head outside get into your car that you just bought yep brand new tesla yep thankfully the salary you're making 300k a year making good money essentially just doing barely logistic work but nonetheless you decide to head to court or is there somewhere else you'd like to go first um no, I'll go straight to court. All right. And as you head to court, we then pan over to our Malkavian. Marilyn. Yeah. You currently have just opened shop for the new Alcott Oddities. It's in a brand new location, a much more updated building, and in a much better location and... Uh, area is there anything you'd like to do before heading to court uh it's july 4th it is july 4th um according to my schedule it's the about time for the weekly fire drill that i make everyone go through once a week okay every room has two smoke detectors in it even the basement attic everywhere they're everywhere yep amelia rebel i have a little fireman hat i put on so everyone knows i mean business They've become accustomed to your uh, weekly fire drills. I come out a little whistle. Doesn't quite understand why um, you are uh, this aggressive about it, but, you know, 
the last Alcott did burn down, so you have been uh, burnt before. Wow. Quite a few times. However, Rebel uh, views this as a game and almost uh, has become trained to the drill. The sound of the whistle immediately puts him into high gear as he follows his exact same fire drill procedure. After the procedure is done, Amelia is standing outside, waiting for you to come out and give the all clear. I look out the window from the top floor. I open it. I don't see a trampoline down there, Amelia. We've been over this before. Do you want us to pull the trampoline every time? Yes. You never know if Rebel's going to need to go through the window. You want to catch him? Do you want me responsible for killing my dog? This is serious. I need you to start treating this seriously, all right? Notice that Camille then makes her way over to the side of the building where she unlocks a gate. You notice that she pulls out what appears to be a small trampoline and pulls it to the sidewalk street. Thank you. You're beautiful. Is this the all clear, Marilyn? I'm going to do one final sniff test. You smell no fire or smoke. We're clear. Good job, everyone. Amelia, I'm going to give you a 5 out of 10 tonight. Not super impressed with the stunt with trampoline. We've been doing this every night for the last year. Yeah, it's such a little dramatic. It's once a week, okay? I make you test all the fire alarms every night. Okay. She grabs the trampoline and she pulls it back into the gate and locks it up. And you realize that you have court tonight. Fuck. Am I going to get a text message or? You were aware this has been kind of uh, been planned for the last few weeks. You're also really concerned because Felix is now the primogen of the Malkavian clan here in Chicago. Kevin has been wanting you to be more involved with your own clan. Kevin currently is in belief that Diedrich was responsible for the fires and many of the other incidences that were going on during 2019 and early 2020. And thus has been blood hunted. Your meetings with Felix have been short and few, but it's very obvious that he enjoys twisting the knife whenever he is around you. All right. Um, I'm going to get my things together. I'm going to I'm gonna call an Uber. Okay. We're trying that again. It's a new year. New me. No more starting, dead Uber drivers. Starting off with an Uber. Yeah. Okay. All right, Amelia, I got to go out and do some important stuff, important business stuff, because I'm an adult. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and man the shop. Um, is there anything you want me to do when you're gone, or are you, I'm assuming are you coming back tonight? I should be. Why don't you go ahead and just make sure you feed Rebel, and then you call early tonight, and I'll be back. See you in the morning. So you want me to close the shop? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. I'll do that. Well, you have a good night. I'm sure I won't. I'm gonna set Nikki. On like a little table by the door. All right, I need you to watch the building, okay, while I'm gone. You look towards Mickey and you see it. All right, good. All right, I'll be back. And I'm gonna leave. I'm locking the door behind me. Okay. As you lock the door and head out, get a hold of an Uber, <clears throat> and it promptly picks you up, takes you to court. And I don't kill him. You do not kill him. Oh my god, this is the best night of my life. Um, but I would like all of my kindred to now give me their nightly rouse check. Pass. 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 Wow. Mm. wow. We do everybody. Apparently. Everyone yeah. passed? Yeah. Yeah, we're doing good. We're on a roll. We just <coughs> jinxed it. <laughs> we're all starting off with 100, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Very, very shortly, you all find yourself at the Succubus Club. Of course, it is 4th of July, so the club is actually closed. Um, no one is here besides for uh, Kindred. You notice that uh, looks as though um, K 
Kevin has gotten some ghouls to set up cameras and uh, audio equipment to record Memphis's show. But as you all make your arrival to uh, court, the first thing you realize is that there's a lot more kindred here than you remember uh, in the past previous courts. In fact, all the caitiff are here, and you actually see Anarchs. In fact, most of the Anarchs. Specifically Anita, who you know has been a prompt disprover, or <clears throat> disapproves of Kevin's leadership. And there's been rumors whispering while you guys have all been caged up inside hasn't stopped the local kindred from gossiping spreading rumors and there's been whispers in the wind that Anita wants to claim baronship but the scene begins with the two of you arriving around the same time outside of the succubus club I get out my Uber and I look over Erwin. Erwin! Hey. You made it. I, I did. Uh, I, I, got, I got a new car. I see that. When was the, when's the last time we would have all seen each other? It's uh, been several months. Um, you guys kind of went out and saw each other a little bit, every like maybe once or twice. But for the most part, your movement in the city has been very minimal. You look, you look good. You look good. Thank um, you. Go to Pat one arm, and I realize this is missing arm, and I reach around Pat the other one. You, you look great, pal. Oh, thank you. So you uh, is that like one of them self-driving cars? It, it is actually. Uh, it's it's, it's terrifying. Pretty, it's pretty nice. Right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Well, shall we? Yeah. Yes. I go ahead. Uh -huh. Walk in. Is that the sound of your alarm? I don't know. Uh -huh. it, it is now. <laughs> it's like a clog horn. Did you fart? <laughs> chair dragging across the ground <laughs> your car locks you head inside meanwhile Alec you arrive with Damien and you quickly make your way to Kevin's presence now that you are in front of Kevin you notice that Sierra your primogen is also there as well <clears throat> Alec is it? yeah it's, it's Alec alright all right, come in and have a seat. Okay. Hi, Sierra, also. I'm going to sit down. Sierra gives you a nod. Now, so far, I got to say, I'm impressed. Now, maybe it has something to do with this lockdown and the pandemic, but you haven't even made a mouse whisper in this city. I like that. I do what I can, man. That was going to be my final test for you. You can do this. I will be, uh... I'll be a very happy prince. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, Damon said some. Damien said something about, uh... About a coterie. Now I'm getting ready to lift uh, the restrictions and let you, Kindred, run back out into the city. There is a particular coterie here in my domain that has had a history of causing... Mm -hmm. Shenanigans, tomfoolery, fucking things up. So why am I a part of them? You're gonna be their babysitter. I'm sorry, I'm gonna be what? You're gonna be their babysitter. What? Funny thing is, you're actually the youngest one out of all of them. Well, second youngest. But, they need a coterie leader. And, you're no Ventru, but I hear that the Sombra make great leaders. Uh, you know, I can... Now, I'm not saying you gotta be friends with them. And I'm not saying that you gotta bend over backwards to keep them happy. I'm just saying you gotta keep them in line. Whether that's by hammer or glove, I don't care. Don't have them causing problems. I think you and I both know that I don't have problems. So Good. Be quiet, you know? 
Is that going to be an issue with them? <laughs> most certainly is going to be an issue. They're not exactly the most tactful or subtle. <laughs> That bodes well. This isn't a punishment. This is a challenge. You're making it sound oh, like a punishment. You're, you make, you're making it sound like a punishment, Kevin. Sierra kind of speaks up. I'm, I'm going to have to. Um, Kevin, if you would. By all means, Sierra. And as Kevin kind of puts his hand on his face. Sierra. Alec, you've been doing great. Really, honestly. Thank you. And we've already lost one of our own here in the city within the last year. Kevin and I are pretty sure the Anarchs are behind it. We can't afford to lose any more of the Sombra. So, not only are you going to be looking after them, but I also want some individuals with you, so in case we are being targeted, you'll have some backup. Trust me, these kindred, as obnoxious as they may be, they're quite powerful. Explain a lot better than uh, Kevin does. All right, now you gotta give me some break. Uh, I've got a lot on my plate tonight, and uh, to be honest, there's only one person I think could actually lead this coterie, and I don't know where the fuck he is. So, best of luck to you. <laughs> Thanks. The snarkiness is noted. Get the fuck out of my office now. Okay. <laughs> no. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at Sierra and be like and I'm gonna turn and leave. As you get up and turn and walk out of there, uh the the door opens and Damien looks towards you. Uh, sound like that went well. The fuck you you could have told me I was gonna be like a babysitter. Like Yeah, that's the thing made about it sound being... easy. <sighs> and he made it sound really fucking difficult, Damien. I'm, uh, I'm gonna let you in on something, man. And I want you to keep this between us. Kind of moves up towards you. Now you understand what a sheriff does, right? More or less. I mean, you were never really Sabbat. You were embraced into sort of a independent Sabbat or yeah. independent Lasamra. So I clean up a lot of messes here in the city. Over the last two years, I've had over 50 cases, and they've done at least 30 of them. You've got to be... You've got to be fucking kidding I don't know why Kevin keeps them around. But... You know, he, you know, he said that the leader left, right? You make it sound... Everybody's making it sound like he made the right decision. Why am I being put <laughs> as the babysitter? Honestly, it all comes down to this, dude. You're the Sombra, and you're the lowest stick in the shit pool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm full of you, but that's why I'm pissed. I don't have a choice. Well, um, you know, say, Damien kind of walks over the balcony and looks over the edge. He was like, well, that's one of them right there. He points down, he points towards Memphis. Which, what are you doing down the, on the stage, Memphis? Oh, um, I'm probably trying, with my computer, trying to hook it up to the projector, because I've, I've put together an intro. Okay. So, oh I'm going to be out there explaining to them about the pyrotechnics when they need to go off. Explain it, we'll play it. Alright, All right, so, after the intro, you'll know the key, like, the point to do it. That's where... The cannons three through six are gonna go off on that side. And then one through three and seven through nine are gonna go off on that side. I don't know why they wired it like that. No, I don't know. <laughs> this is what they did. But anyway, yeah. My face, I'll be coming up the middle and I'll start going into it. And then, yeah, just hit them with the lights. Uh, like, just make sure they're. Di as disorganized as possible. They don't know what's happening except for the euphoria of my music coming over the crowd. And then it cuts back to Alec <laughs> and Damien. Would I recognize him? 
Because it's... Yeah, you can go ahead and give me a wits and awareness. <laughs> oh, God. Pirate tactics. Are you going to cause rot track? <laughs> <laughs> What do you oh. think happened at Alcott's Oddities first time? Oh, you son of a bitch. So, I rolled a lot. Oh, well, where is it? Which one? Which one's the ones you rolled? All these ones. Oh, shit. Okay, okay so. Difficulty will be two. Yeah. Oh, he killed it, so he's got two, four, so eight, and then uh, eight, but just in case he has a failure. Yeah. Well, you crushed it, so. Um, you re- instantly recognize him. In fact, you're a big Memphis Piper fan. Um, I didn't say that. <laughs> you are now God has fuck I also hotly became a fan holy shit he just <laughs> like Alistair <laughs> you immediately see and recognize him as Mem- uh, Memphis Piper you thought he was dead um, you didn't know that he was a kindred I'm gonna like grab Damien's shoulder and be like are you fucking kidding is that who I think that is yeah it's Memphis Piper and I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. We don't have cannons. I don't, he's, he's just screaming at... First, I'm a babysitter. Now I'm a baby... Like, am I a security guard? Like, what's going on? I, I don't understand. Well, like I said, Kevin's got a real soft spot for the kids, so uh, you really need to make sure nothing happens to him. Uh, you need to treat him like literally the golden child. <laughs> Do I have to? I would. God damn it, dude. And who else? Like, it can't get worse uh, than that, right? It's not worse than that. Oh, shit, there's the other two. And he points over towards the entrance, and inside you see walking in both Marilyn and uh, Irwin. Is that, is that a fucking doctor? Like, <laughs> uh, Yeah, I don't know why he wears a lab coat everywhere. It's um, He just started doing that, but uh, I think, honestly, he looks like the lizard bad guy from Spider-Man, but... No, I can kind of see it. Like, I'm like squint. I'm like gonna get a real good look of him. Can I notice? Yeah, um, you can easily see that his arm. He's got even got it like taped up or stitched up, like how uh, uh, Lizard Man does. Yeah, he's not uh, he's not trying to grow that back, is he? Uh, yeah, I don't know what happened to him. He lost it like a year ago. Something during an attack. I don't know. And the other one? Uh, that's Marilyn, uh, Clay Malkavian. Not really. I don't know too much about her other than her sire is a fucking psychopath, I guess. She started a bunch of fires last year. As it were, I guess she looks like the most normal one? Yeah, she's okay. normal-ish. I would like to take this moment to do a few little ballerina moves into Elysium. I'm showing Erwin something that I've been practicing. Okay. As you start to see her do a ballerina spin in front of Erwin. I'm gonna use this for my roller derby team. I'm gonna use it on the field and knock bitches out with my skates. Oh, you're allowed to hit people in the face? Yeah. My team, my rules. Oh. All right. That sounds very dangerous. Uh, I'm also gonna I'm gonna glue razor blades to, to them also. Really? So they won't get too close. I'm gonna make a mess of that floor. <clears throat> I suppose so. I just like Damien looks towards you. So yeah, that's uh that's kinda what you're dealing with. Um This is gonna be easy. This is gonna be easy. We're gonna just do it for a little bit. I don't have to worry about you. I don't have to worry about Kevin. Well, you're still gonna have to worry about me, but yeah. You you know what I mean. You know, I, I see you outside of my apartment every night, you know that, right? Yeah. I don't like that. I just want you to Like I said, I don't like it either. Your apartment sucks. Yeah. That's the point. It smells like shit. I literally saw someone get shot yesterday. Yeah. It keeps away other people. Like, I don't know, man. Like, just, I don't even want to be here, okay? Okay. All right. You know what? Um, I'll go grab your, uh, your new co-re members, and um, I, I'll let Kevin know you're ready to meet him. Is there like a chairs or something? Up yeah, here? there's so, lounges up here and everything. Yeah, I'm gonna go down. into. Uh, I assume there's like one where it's like a big L kind of shape. Yep. With like a thing in the middle. Yeah, I'm gonna go sit down. <clears throat> As you go and sit down, Damien makes his way up to Memphis. Hey, Memphis. Oh, hey. Uh. It's Damien. Sherry. Yes. Uh, Sherry. Yeah. Really, man. 
Fuck sorry. you, dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm bad with names. I get it. I'm not a fucking famous musician. I'm only a fucking little time doing little gigs. Whatever, dude. You play mu music? Y you fucking know this. <laughs> like, do you want to collab on something sometime? You've told me, you've said this exact oh. same thing to me like three times. Where are my manners? I'm so sorry. I am very busy um, doing my homecoming show. Um, so unless it's something highly important... I need to, uh... Yeah, you're needed upstairs. Back. Kevin's gonna introduce you to some people. Who? Just go upstairs, man. All right, I'll give, I'll give him five minutes. Five minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. <laughs> I fucking hate that guy. You notice that Damien makes his way over, like, hey, uh, Irwin, Marilyn... Hey, Damien. Hey, Marilyn. How's it going? Good. When's the next show? Uh, it's actually, now that we're able to go out and do stuff, Baby Choir is going to be popping off again, so... Baby Chorus, are you alright? Sorry. I've got a lot of shit going on. Baby Chorus is going to be popping off, I'm, I'm, and, uh, Okay, yeah. good, because my, my... I don't know if you noticed, but I bought some merch last year, and I wore it, like, every day, and it kind of got burnt up, so, um, I need new merch. I'll so tell you what, I'll hook you up with a free shirt. That would be awesome. And, um... Tell you what, you uh, you catch me for the next show. Uh, I think we're, Genghis is gonna be uh, setting up some stuff. So, oh, yeah. What do you mean setting up stuff? Uh, he's in a lot of the music scene, so he gets his in on a lot of places. So. Oh, all right. Not sure where, but we'll be playing somewhere soon. All right, I'll keep an ear out, eye out. Doc, Doc something. Damien, you and Marilyn, uh, you go upstairs talk to the prince. Whatever it is, we didn't do it. We ha we just got back together. Yeah. Uh, no, it's months. really more about like um, some new information for you guys. Oh, oh, all right. Let's go. Okay. You notice that as you leave, you can hear and see Damon kind of just. And as you all make your way upstairs, you actually see Memphis up there waiting as well. The three of you actually make eye contact. Hey! Hey, what are you doing up here? Shouldn't you continue, like, setting up? I noticed that, that. Literally, that's what I said. I said, hey, you're going to give me a show to come back alive, and you're just going to... Wait, is it a show to come back alive? Oh, yeah, Memphis is back. And get this. You ready for this? He's a vampire rapper. Oh, that's real meta. Yeah, yeah. Kevin approved this? Yeah. So, so what happens to Johnny Bronco? Johnny Bronco? Um, uh, I'm sure I'll use him for like espionage or secret missions. Oh, okay. Like Honey a, pots. Another, another. Alias. Yeah. Are you coming back as Memphis Piper? Yeah. Sure? Memphis Fang. Memphis Fang. Memphang. Memphang. Oh, Memphang. Like yeah. Yes. I was gonna say Count Memphula, but uh, Memphang is pretty cool too. Count Memphula. It's got a nice ring to it, huh? Yeah, but it doesn't strike fear like Mem Fang. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Let me think on that. I might use that. You hear, both pretty terrified. You hear Kevin's door open up, and you notice that he closes the door behind him. He knows that both uh, the uh, Sierra, the Primogen, seem to be leaving his room, and they're making their way downstairs. He uh, looks towards him like, all right, 15 minutes, and then we're going to get ready to start court. So everyone looks like they're starting to pile in now. He looks over towards uh, three of you. All right. Memphis, Marilyn, Irwin. Kevin. Spend some time. Hopefully you all have been uh, behaving, I would assume. Always. I swear to God I haven't done anything what? wrong. Have you heard anything? Not yet. Hey, am I going to hear something? I'm going to, like, hit him. I don't, I, I don't know if it no. I don't think so. Not for me. Yeah, we've been... Everything good. I don't know if it's Perfect. because you're a Tremere or it's because of how awkward you are, but everything you say always sounds like a lie. He's not lying. I'll, I'll tell you if he's lying. He's not lying. He's telling the truth. Well, I have someone to introduce you all to. Oh, who? You know, it's, uh, he looks over towards the table that you're sitting at. Alec, why don't you come over here? I'm going to get up and walk over with my hands in my pocket. He walks over. Let me introduce you to Alec. Alec, 
Uh, you know his last name again? Kaminsky. This is Alec Kaminsky. All right? He's a part of Clan LaSombra. He's oh. new here in Chicago. After a tragic loss of one of their clan members, Sierra has brought in uh, another clan member, and uh, he's going to be coming into the fold. Uh, all right. Come Wait, what fold? Our fold? The Camarilla. Oh. And Ooh, okay. your coterie. Oh, I come, wait, what? whoa, wait, hold, hold on, on. All right. hold That's on. Fine. Before he goes any further, I had the same exact reaction. It's nothing, against, a, it's nothing against you. And it's nothing against you either. It's just, just we have we have a chemistry going on right now. We have we have a system. And we already so have that's four how, people. Now, when we have, now, when Kevin Jackson has us do things. We have a system. That's why we get things done perfectly. Always, we are the go-to group. Are you still sure about this, Kevin? <laughs> Crystal. Now. Crystal. Okay. I need. Four of you to get along. Because you're going to be all in the same coterie now. And Alec is going to be promoted to your lead. I'm sorry, uh, what? what? He's going to be your coterie leader. I feel like you're trying to replace Alistair or something. I you am be... exactly replacing Alistair. No, because he's. No! Oh. No one replaces Alistair! Alistair's coming back! He's just on vacation! He is he's just on coming vacation. back! He should and, be back any day now. And. It, when he comes back, I'll have him step in as the leader of the coterie, Memphis. It's going to be like this every time. <laughs> Did we do something wrong? Listen. I asked the same thing. Listen. Right now, I'm not quite sure what the Anarchs are planning, but I have a feeling they're targeting the Sombra. He needs protection. I trust the three of you to be able to protect him. And I trust him to be able to keep the three of you from getting your noses in shit you shouldn't belong. Uh, well, real, real quick uh, question. Um, if if he's supposed to be the leader, why do we have to protect him? Shouldn't one of us be the leader then if we're doing the protecting? In the game of chess, the king is the weakest piece. Oh, well, that's kind of We haven't played that chess game before. That's not it's usually the happen. king is the strongest piece. The Wait. certain it's the queen. It's the queen. Wait, who's the queen then? I thought it was a pawn. Kevin's clearly the queen. I no. would take that title. But in my position of power, I would also have to say that I am a king. And I have everyone in court that's here to look after. Uh, and Michael's your queen. <laughs> Who the fuck is Michael? <laughs> the sheriff. Damien? Damien. Thank God. How do you not remember his name? He's in the he band. Like a Wait, so I'm the queen of our coterie. Hey, Memphis, if you want to be the queen of the coterie, <laughs> fine. It's, it's, I mean, it's a goddamn analogy. What am I? I think That's, we're all queens. A, what, Is that how chess works? Yeah, well, of course. I don't like chess. I don't know anything about it. This king has a harem of queens. We are the queens. We're here to protect the king because we are the best queens. How many queens do you think are on a chessboard? <laughs> now there's three. Is there a limit? There's at least two, usually. One on each side. I see. Listen, point being, to speak to you as an adult, a fellow adult, um, I don't think that we need leadership. I feel I feel like what we have going on right now and how we've handled things in the past. This is my verdict, and that's final. Yes, sir. Now, I'm going to leave the four of you to get to know each other. Memphis, I'm sure you're going to do absolutely wonderful in tonight's show. But please, understand where I'm coming from on this. Okay? Yes. Good. I have to get ready for my speech downstairs. Enjoy the night. Yes, sir. Yes, he turns and walks away. You think you're real smooth, don't you? I'm not calling you Alistair. I don't even know who Alistair is. You want to go sit down? How you don't know who Alistair is? Alistair you... is the man. Oh, my The gosh. legend. Do you know anything about us? I know that uh, 50 of the calls that Damien got, 30 of them were you guys. 
That's a lie. Yeah, That's and lie. guess how many of those 50 got answered by us? All of them. No, I meant that you caused 30 of those. <laughs> yes, so, and I then mean, we technically... solved them. You sound like a narc. Are you gonna narc on us? Are you gonna narc? You're a doctor, like... <laughs> What the fuck do you even do? I, hey, what he does in his free time. Yeah, hey, you know, doctor, you should respect doctors, all right? And Again, he doesn't really I'm do not... anything as a doctor. He kind of does like blood tests and stuff, but he still, you should respect him. Not true. He right. earned that title. Wait, are you a narc? I'm not a narc. All right. Say one of us was messing around with some demons, would you tell on him? Well, oh, Memphis. <laughs> it's, well, it's a hypothetical. No one, we don't, we've never seen a single demon in our lives. Honestly, I don't give a shit. Okay, it's good. Do you want to go sit down so we can actually talk before he has to go on stage? Yeah, he passed the test. Okay. The trial test. Yeah. There's still. I'm going to go sit down. More tests to go. And I'm going to be like... Oh, so he's leading us already. He's making us follow him. Do you even have a bazooka? He doesn't have a bazooka. Why the fuck would I need a bazooka? How big's your mansion? I don't have a bazooka. I don't have a mansion. How many cars do you have? I drive a fucking bike. What business do you own? I am a fucking worker. Doing what? Wait, you have a bike? I have a bike. Like you know what a bike is? I know who you are, at the very least. Well, of course. Like most people? Yes. I'm a god. Can huh. can you guys come sit down? So I don't have to keep yelling at I you. I prefer to stand. Thank you very much. Well, how about you come over here All and right, stand? You stand. All right, I'm going to stand right here. I'm going to go stand right in front of him. Now Thank I'm you. lording over you, all right? I'm not giving fine. you the power. That's fine. All right. Look, I don't know who Alistair is, and I really don't know who all of you are well, and what you've done. That's fine, because I keep a picture of him in my wallet at all times. I'm pulling a picture of Alistair. That's Alistair. Can you make a copy of that? Yeah, actually, Memphis, this is yours. I stole it from you. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, frick, yes! Again, I don't, I don't care. As soon as Alistair comes back, I don't have to be your babysitter anymore. All right, let me no, throw- No, it's a babysitter. We're adults. I was told I was your babysitter. Well, Hypothetical. Say we're, uh, our coterie is faced against, um, let's say 12 werewolves. Make it 13. 13. 13 werewolves. Hypothetically, why the fuck would you be around you 13 werewolves? You didn't let werewolves? me finish. All right. So, of course, clearly, I'm going to be in the raptors ready to pounce. You're going to be in the raptors, huh? Yeah, I'm going to be in the raptors with the, my katana. The raptors? Yes. The raptors are up, there are fucking raptors in Chicago. Yes. Are you sure about that? Yeah, what do you think holds up the roof, dumbass? <laughs> raptors? Yeah, Dinosaurs? Raptors. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You know what? I think we're being harsh. This might work out. I'm getting some Alistair energy here. This might this might be salvageable. It is. I, I did get a positive feeling. Yeah, yeah. It. I like that. I like this. Okay, we. I think we can work with this. Yeah, what do you make this work? Uh, Look. At it the sucks that you're poor, but... No, it, it, it doesn't <laughs> suck that I'm poor because I live within my means. I don't care. I just want to. I just want to exist. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to mean. I mean, it sucks for us that you're poor. Yeah. It usually. He's a fucking doctor. <laughs> I don't know. This is fucking Memphis Piper. Are you kidding me? I'm it sucks not, for you that. It... As a leader, as a leader, we're meant to drive your cars and wreck your cars, and then we don't yeah. have to pay. Why are you wrecking cars? Why don't you just exist? We're usually considered the poor ones. Wait. Hey. What about the tracking? How are we not going to be tracked if he doesn't own a company it's just really, to keep us from getting the, tracked? The dynamic is really switched here. It's kind of weird. Oh, jeez. So we're supposed to protect you for some reason. Not You're you, supposed you, to protect, you us. protect us. I uh, All right. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We can do this. We can Let's do this. Let's just talk after the show. We'll talk after the show. Yeah, you need you you need to be ready to get yeah. your best performance. So go ahead and slow right. down a little bit. I'm coming back. All right. Oh, by the way, I'm a vampire rapper. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Why does? Why do you think I care? Why As Memphis you? then leaves. <laughs> what? You need to care, right? You're a coterie leader. You need to care about Memphis. You're basically his stepdad right now. Okay, you know that. You need to be there for him when he needs you most. Okay. I didn't choose just sit him. Down and, just sit down and enjoy the performance. Fine. Fine. You know what? No one chooses their family. <laughs> they don't. And I don't want to fucking be here, Irwin. Doctor Irwin. Or whatever it is Thank that you, you do. Thank you. That was very nice, and a lot of people don't do that. Wow. At least Should not I not? Early. No, no, are do you, it. Are you a doctor? Uh, I am a doctor. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome for you being a doctor. <laughs> no, I don't I understand mean, this I mean, dynamic. Usually, what no one addresses me as a doctor until at least not this early. But so. Uh, it's alright. Right. Why, why don't we just take this time to center ourselves? You know. 
who's Frava? Who's Frava? We're gonna all be relaxed. We're gonna watch the show, and then we can continue fighting in the alley behind the theater, wherever we're at. Where are we again? Succubus Club. This place. We're going back alley, and then we'll continue our fighting out there in true coterie fashion. Enjoy the show, Alec. I don't want to fight. Enjoy the show. You don't want to fight? I don't want to fight. Meanwhile, Memphis, you are getting ready to take up the stage. You've already got your music is starting to blare throughout the speakers and fill the entire uh, dance floor. Yeah. And at this point, you notice that as the beat starts to roll, you see that uh, one of the uh, prompters looks towards you, rolls their hand forward, and you realize it's showtime. Oh yeah. So I'm instantly gonna be sprung up from the floors. Oh god. Okay. And instantly go in to one of the fattest, sickest. Okay, go ahead and uh, why don't you go ahead and give me your, let's do, Let's do charisma and performance. Can I throw some majesty on that? Oh, you absolutely can. Mm, a little spice. Does anyone have an extra uh, d20 I can use? Or a d20? d20. It's, it's <laughs> going for a high number, huh? <laughs> this is my dance maraca. So I got nine, but a critical success. Beautiful. You guys watch as the beat drops and Memphis gets into his set. It's like he becomes a different person. It just, a switch turns on and he's no longer the bumbling idiot. He is a artist. Bumbling what? <laughs> at his prime. <laughs> and he just starts to pop off. You even look in the crowd and you guys can't help but to find your, your heads kind of bobbing to the music. You even look down, you can even see Critios is kind of like. Oh, wow, he's doing good, right? You know, look over Alec. Is he dancing? Alec, you do feel this surge kind of swell through you of this beat. It almost, it's like he makes the music living and it just sort of rolls through you and you can't help but just like have your limbs kind of just start popping to the beat. The set goes on for several minutes, gives a 15 minute performance. Jesus. And as this happens, uh, he goes through several of his new songs and one of his classics. After the set is done, there is a row roaring cheer of applause throughout the uh, room. And even some of the most stuffy trifle kindred you could imagine are sitting there with their hands giving a nice subtle clap to the whole thing. You can even see uh, Genghis is there and Genghis is just like, now that is some fucking good music. Good shit. And I'm gonna live forever. <laughs> as Memphis gets off the stage, you see that uh, it looks as though Prince Kevin Jackson gets up and takes stage. <sighs> well, now that was a riveting performance by Memphis Piper. Thank you very much there, Memphis. Uh, I have to say, I do enjoy seeing you perform live. So, everyone, thank you all for uh, coming out. And also, I'd like to go ahead and say that uh, thanks everyone for sticking with us through the year of 2020. Now, I know it's been hard, I know we've had uh, difficulties, but we're gonna make this through. Now, we need to address some of the situations that have been going on in the city. You know, as, as soon as this happens, you see it appears to be one of the Anarchs in the room pulls a gun big no-no at court is bringing a weapon into Elysium. How they got it through the gun check? Who knows? But you hear the sound of the f 
gunfire go off. Thankfully, the sound of fireworks is masking the gunshot. Everyone in the room sort of pauses and freaks out, kind of stops for a moment. Kevin sort of uh, stands his ground. You notice that Damien immediately steps up. A few other of the kindred seem to step up. The primogen also kind of spread out. You notice that the Anarch that just fired the gun raises it down as you watch as the group kind of spreads and you see Anita taking a step forward. How attractive is Anita? Oh, fuck. You've seen Anita before. Uh, she's a rather uh, short, petite uh, female. She has uh, the side of her head is shaved. She has kind of this swooped over black hair. Um, she appears to be Caucasian. Wait, is she from here? Uh, you know that she is a Anarch. She's not part of Clan Tremere. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, you know that she is a Bruja. Great pleasantries there, Kevin, but I don't think this is really the time to be celebrating. We're losing Anarchs, and you seem to not give a fuck about any of that happening. Now hold up. First of all, you brought a fucking gun into court. That was your first mistake. Second, you fucking interrupt me. And third, I've had my kindred also die on my watch. And it looks like the Anarchs are the ones that are responsible. You guys take a look around. You notice that Ads and Ezerly and Bennett are also here. You notice that as soon as it happens, you notice that Ads looks over towards you and kind of gives you this. You notice he tips his hat towards you. You notice that Bennett sort of slides his way as the argument continues. He makes his way over towards you. <clears throat> Bennett gets right up to your ear. Could you guys give me a wits and awareness, please? Oh, lordy. I got four successes. Four? Okay. Two. Four. Both Erwin and Alec, you see Bennett. You're not sure who Bennett is, but you know who Bennett is, the owner of Red Number Five. You watch as he slides over to Memphis and he makes his way right up towards you and he kind of brings his hand up and he whispers in your ear and you hear him just say, Ads limo outside after this. Heard. He kind of backs up. You notice that he kind of backs away. He makes his way over towards Ezra Lee. Ads, and you hear the argument continue to go off. Anita seems to be getting more and more infuriated, and Kevin seems to be not backing down. You notice that uh, Critios even seems to step forward and goes, Anita, this is not the time. You can shut up. This whole shit, all of it, you Camarilla fucking lap dogs, it's all garbage. She looks right over towards uh, Mal Davis, who's standing there. You know, as Mal Davis is kind of considered a figurehead of the caitiffs here in the uh, city. I'm sure Mal Davis is done with your shit, too. You know, as Mal Davis looks towards. Uh, and Mal Davis is a very thin, uh, very skinny uh, black female. Almost has like a, a caramel complexion, kind of a, a Hal Berry, uh, Halle Berry look. With her hair, very short hair. Uh, you notice that she looks over towards Anita. No, no. I'm sick of both the Anarchs and I'm sick of the fucking cam. Both of you are such... You're both hypocrites. All of you. You just want the same type of hierarchy and bullcrap in this city. Anita seems to be... It's, it's fine. Whatever. Clan Gangrel wants to be part of this. Clan Gangrel has already been hurt enough by this. I said. Kevin goes, now wait a minute. Notice that uh, 
Rosa seems to stand up for Clan Gangrel. Now I respect you, Kevin. Honestly, and I'm grateful for what you've done, but now after hearing what is going on with the Lupines in the city, and you wanting to fucking let them do what they want in our city? No, fuck that. I'm not gonna let that happen. Bring on another Lupine war. Let me at him. You notice that throughout the room, some of the kindred seem to see Kevin starting to lose his grip on this conversation as it seems like he's getting dogpiled on. You notice that as this happened, Kevin goes to speak up his room, uh, speak up into the room. Now for the last time, and you hear a very familiar voice ring out as the sound of footsteps ring and in, click into the room. There's no need to keep talking, Kevin, as you hear Alistair make his way into the room. As Alistair walks in, you notice the kindred seem to stop and look towards him. Kevin looks towards Alistair. Where in the hell have you been? <laughs> I've been away on business. And, uh, sorry to be, uh... Alistair! 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 It's Memphis! You know, as he looks over towards Memphis and just... Anyways. <laughs> he remembers. Why don't you go ahead and let me take the floor on this, Kevin? And we can, uh, sum this up. Real nice, simple, and quick-like. And you hear Anita go... Great, another fucking straight male who wants to have a four. Good, go ahead. That's that Alistair turns and looks. Sorry, what? What was that? Did you say something, Anita? Yeah, just another straight white male. Another part of the patriarch. I'm sure you like talking. That's all you ever do. Oh, good. Talking. Well, I was hoping to keep this civil, but, uh... I mean, if you're going to try to bring in some sort of, uh, my reputation, uh, I'll just let you know that I was, uh, running up and down the Mason-Dixon line, killing Confederate soldiers like fucking flies while you were still not even a protein cell in your daddy's nutsack! So sit down! Notice that Nita seems to back up. Kevin goes, All right now, Alistair. Let's keep things civil here. Oh yes, civil. Of course. Now, where was I? Oh, that's right. I believe the Anarchs, Kevin, have drawn their line. The chalk mark is there. And now we're here to guard it. Consider this your only night of truce this point on, the Anarchs are now the enemy of the Camel River, here, in Chicago. Kevin goes, now wait a goddamn minute, I'm sorry Kevin, but last time I checked, the Ivory Tower has given me authority over you, so would you please sit down, and now I have to clean up your city. You hear the sound of someone kind of ruffle, and you hear this thick Irish voice kind of spit out. It was like, and who the fuck do you think you... And within a flash, you notice this instant. You guys have recognized this guy before. His name's Duncan. Um, part, part of the Anarchs. Uh, kind of, uh, everyone calls him Sarge sometimes. Real hot-headed individual. Gangrel. Within a flash, you guys watch as Alistair moves up on Duncan. Duncan's eyes barely even register the speed at which Alistair shows up. And you watch as Alistair's hands bury into his chest. And he tears his chest like a fucking door cabinet. You watch both rib cages open up. And you see him standing there as Duncan... Oh, and he starts to back up as Alistair pushes him forward. You left your shirt open. Keep fucking talking, and I'll undress the rest of you. 
He looks towards the rest of anyone else want to make a move. As you hear the sound of screaming echoing out throughout the succubus club. What the fuck is happening? As Duncan hits the ground, blood spilling out onto the floor, the other Anarchs quickly grab him and start pulling him as you hear him screaming in pure agony. You notice that Alistair turns with blood sprayed on his face as the Anarchs begin to disperse and leave the Succubus Club. Anita looks towards Kevin. This is war. This and your fucking steroid out lapdog. This is war. And you watch as the Anarchs begin to disperse and leave. Leaving behind the Primogen and the Camarilla standing with their jaws agape at just what happened. You notice that the only person who isn't terribly concerned is Felix and Portia. You notice that Portia seems to be sitting and staring and looking very disturbed at the sight that just happened. Portia looks disturbed? Yeah. You notice know, as Alistair turns and then looks towards everybody. <clears throat> I'm home. Sorry, I'm late. How have we all been? You notice as he makes his steps forward. Can I move towards him? Sure. Uh, Memphis? Alistair! I'm gonna try to push my uh, way through there and be like, Alistair, oh my god, where have you been? I've been away, Memphis. How are you? I'm great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you you, you kind of just left without saying anything, which is fine. It's it's totally fine because I knew you'd come back. I told Marilyn. I told you he'd come back. He, he, he yeah. Yes. He came back. Yes, I came. Yeah. I came back. Unfortunately, not for you or the rest of the coterie. Whoa, what does that mean? He looks towards Kevin. Kevin, I'm going to tell you this right now. I'm here to strictly do the Camarilla business, take care of the problems that the Ivory Tower is having that you can't seem to handle, and I don't want anything to do with this coterie. They've already given me enough of the fucking headaches. I'm done with them. I'm done cleaning their bloody fucking Wait. diapers. Is so, there another coterie? Did you get no, I'm talking to you, Memphis and Marilyn and Irwin. I thought you liked us. No, I fucking loathe you. Get the fuck away from me. <laughs> this guy, he's got jokes. He's been gone forever. Come here, give me a hug. <laughs> and he's going to bring his hand back, and Ooh. as it hits you, oh, let's, uh... Don't worry, I can take you, it. Can you give me a Dex and uh, athletics? <laughs> the death marker. Uh, it's six, but it's a me messy... Me it's messy. <laughs> okay, so you're ready to go ahead and take uh, three points of non-lethal as his hand goes across your face and smacks you. Actually watch as Memphis flies sort of halfway across the room before he hits the ground and soars until he finally kind of skids and stops. What the fuck is wrong with you, Alistair? Now I said, I'm not here for you. I'm not joking. I'm here to clean up the mess. Well then stop fucking talking to us and go clean it up. Good. Asshole. Kevin, I have a word with you upstairs. Lady Justicar is uh, too preoccupied with other matters, so... She sent me. Let's go. Kevin, Kyle looks towards everyone. Court's dismissed. I'm gonna walk over Memphis. Yeah, I'm gonna walk over to you guys. That can't... That can't be... You guys go ahead and give me a uh, wits and insight. Or intelligence and insight. Whichever one is the highest. Depending on your successes will depend on what you get. Three. Three. 
Uh, two. Two. Okay. Memphis, this has rattled you to the point where you can't, you you don't know what's going on. Um, he talked like Alistair. He definitely spoke like Alistair, and he hit like Alistair. But did he hit the same way? The two of you, <laughs> it's strange. He has a completely different demeanor. There was almost a coldness in his eyes that you haven't seen in him since you first met him. Well, that, uh, that vacation with Vlad must have really done number on him. <laughs> he's he's probably just uh, jet lag or something. He's fine. That's that's Alistair. He's uh he's back. He just needs a couple days to. Did he treat you like that all the time? <laughs> no. Well, uh, only when we deserved it. <laughs> just... Kind of why. Kind of why I didn't like being around here, you know, shit like that. Hey, real quick, real quick, um, did you guys see that part where he was just like, war with anarchs? Yeah, I also saw the part where he ripped some guy open like a bag of potato chips. Yeah, but he, he does that. Do you think he like finally Not just court. snapped? He has been over the years oh, Acting strange. I don't know, but I think Felix has something to do with this because when they did the whole little war spiel, Felix looked unfucking phased, and I've been watching it. Seriously? You see someone quickly approaching you. As your group, you notice that Kaido makes his approach. He comes up towards you and goes, I. You guys are right? It, yeah. I think. I just saw everything that just happened upstairs. Have you seen Alistair before this point? Alistair is fucking laying into Kevin upstairs. It's pretty intense. What do you mean laying into him? He... Is he gonna kill him? I don't think he's gonna kill him. But man, he fucking looks like it. I don't know what's going on, but that... That does... That doesn't look like Alistair. Uh, it's gonna sound really fucking stupid, but there's something about him that... Don't laugh when I say this. He's wearing, um, he's wearing cufflinks. Oh, Alistair would never. Alistair specifically said he hates yeah. cufflinks. Oh, I... wait, wait, that's what? not Alistair. I, okay, okay, I need to, I need to take this in. Who are you? Oh, um. He's also in our code. This is my brother, Kaido. Yeah, my, uh, my name's Kaido, Kaido Higashi. I'm a sh shake Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I'm Alec. So you're the new coterie member? You know? Coterie leader, actually. Well, no, Coterie no, leader. actually, you're out now. Uh, yeah, Alistair is back. Alistair well, and that, that's is fun back. of Alistair, though. He would never wear cufflinks. You want that to be your leader. I mean... I'd rather have you leader he than also whatever said, that was. He also said he wants nothing to do with us. Yeah. If yeah, but, again, it's his jet lag. He's fine. He's, he, well, Memphis, he's fine. Let me tell you what, Memphis. He, he's gonna come around. I know a lot about denial. I've been there uh, maybe, many, many times. Maybe, maybe he's mad at us about his dogs. And, and the whole, yeah. Uh, you think he's mad yeah, enough, that's the you... thing. I ran into him before he went up there with Kevin. I I haven't been able to get a hold of him. You guys have known this. We haven't been able to get a hold of him for a year. We haven't heard a word, no letters, nothing. He specifically said he was going to contact us. He shows up out of nowhere, comes into court, goes way more aggro than I've ever seen him. And then on top of that, Go up there and tell him that what happened is struck Asuka and Blitz, and he didn't even blink. He loved those dogs. I don't know what the fuck that is that looks like Alistair, but that is not Alistair. Well, okay. I think I know who might have something to do with it. All right, hold on. Maybe we should take one step at a time. Let's go up there and kill the fake Alistair. Actually, uh, let's go out first there. first step, or...? Yeah, no, okay. let's let's restrain the fake Alistair, determine if he's the real one wait, or wait, not. Wait, 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 wait. And then wait, we wait, kill hey. him. You think that's a good... No, we're not doing that. Well, yeah, like, I'm going to have to agree with well, Alec here. That's a terrible you, idea. You guys didn't even let him finish, to be fair. Yeah. No, I... This is a no. You were talking about... You want to... Can you do something that'll rival what he just did? If anything bad happens, Alistair... Oh, wait. Yeah. Yeah. Two and two together, yeah. You, I'm, you figured it out? I'm gonna scan the room. Do I see Felix? Do I hear you with some words? 
I was put in charge of all of you. Whether I want to be or not, One. it doesn't matter. One. You look around and it looks as though the primogen, he left with the primogen. All right, all right, all right. You know what? I think, you know what? Let's give him some respect. See how this goes as a whole leader thing. I think he has a point. I think we should take all this aggression that we have pent up right now about, you know, just taking Alistair down right away. Let's do it to Felix. Let's go find him. Let's do it right now. Who, who's Felix? Well, I, I can't. I've got a meeting. A, me- a meeting? Yeah, I've got a meeting. But hey, maybe they'll be able to give me some information what about mean? the... Oh, it's a secret. Yeah, what, what did the... Um, I can't tell anyone. What did Bennett whisper to you? Hmm? What did Bennett whisper to you earlier? Because I was going to ask about that too. Is that the person's name? Yeah. Who whispers something? I saw it. Who's Bennett? The... You guys going to be wits and insight. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you go ahead and give me uh, manipulation and uh, subterfuge. One. Oh, God. Yeah, actually, I might get away with this. You have to be a two. Right, zero. Yeah, I got four. Yeah, you definitely know he's lying. You can just tell by the way he's, his his facial reaction is. You know, I, I can tell that you're lying, right? You're right. I've been lying. <laughs> Congratulations. Admitting is the first step. I know. I have an important meeting with uh, Bennett that I have to go to. Does that make things difficult for me? As your leader? Nope. You know, I don't believe you. Mm-hmm. Wait, you wouldn't be lying about it if it wasn't going to... Look, I wanted to say this before. Please, just don't don't make things difficult. You just All you got to do. I don't care what you Hey, do. we are the but easiest... But if this is going to do something that's going to make it difficult for me to be in Chicago... Listen, it's not a matter of us making things difficult. People make things difficult for us. Yeah. Like, you know, our buildings get set on fire. We mm-hmm. we have, like, monster zombie dogs so chase us down. So is this going to make things difficult for us? We have to stab the moon. There's multiple people, honestly. Oh, so yeah, we We, we, we have to stab the moon. the moon, yeah. That was, that was the thing. Yeah. You did what? It wasn't really a moon. It ended up being, like, the giant eye of a huge, Owl like, creature. arch fake. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot. A lot of, we got a lot of stories to tell you, man. But we'll catch you up right after my meeting, my secret meeting. Mm-hmm. So see ya. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make my way. As out you back. walk out back to yeah. head towards Ad's limo, Erwin, you're approached by <clears throat> Soon. Soon approaches. She looks towards you, <clears throat> Erwin. Yes. How have you been? been fine how are you good so um we haven't been able to contact you but abraham received word from strauss about your new position here in chicago and how he wants you to be more involved in the decision making for abraham's Vie for power that he seems to not be doing. You're welcome back to the mansion and Hyde Park. And I assure you that if you are still untrusting of the whole situation, um, Strauss is checking in periodically to make sure that you are doing okay. And so far, you haven't been there. Because I haven't felt safe there. Well, I will let you know that Strauss has uh, contacted Abraham last week and said that if he doesn't hear from you within the week's time, then he will be making a visit. Abraham does not want that visit. Uh, That he doesn't. So... If you would please return to the mansion and speak with Abraham. He was supposed to be here tonight, but again, decided to stay shut in as usual. Um, I'll have to check my schedule and see if I have a open time to come see the place. Well, my job's done. I delivered the message. Well, good night, Erwin. 
Uh, good night. Notice that as this happens, you see Felix approaching uh, into the room with Critios and Annabelle, seem to be uh, also making their approach as well. You see that they look towards you, Marilyn. Felix quickly says, mm, Marilyn, darling. Felix, person. I have missed our conversations. You mean the like two or three that we had in the basement? Well, come now. Clan Malkavian is, to be honest here, very lackluster in the city. We need to fix that. We? And yes, you and I mm. work together. Wow, that sounds spectacular. Yes, Kevin has informed me that I am able to delegate Malkavian duties onto you. I'd like you to go speak with Raymond. He hasn't left his haven in some time, and we're starting to worry that his multiple personalities are running amok again. So you want me to go check on him? Checking on him is a very nice word. I want you to make sure he's still fit for the Camarilla. If you understand what I'm saying. Sure, I can, I can do that. And uh, you know, I better, or else something might get caught on fire miraculously. So, at this point, you hear the sound of the door slamming upstairs as you hear the door almost break against the wall, and you see Alistair walking out and turning and walking away uh, from the main dance floor on the second floor. You see Kevin walk out, and his hands are just shaking. He looks down. You four. Up here. Now. Alright, let's go. I'm gonna start walking. Wow. I'd hate to leave this vigorating conversation, but I gotta go. I'm gonna do a really sarcastic curtsy and leave. And as the four of you... Except me. Except you? Yeah, because you went outside? Yeah. As you all come up, where's Memphis? To go talk to someone named Bennett. Fine, whatever. <laughs> I don't have a choice. No. You have five points on the trust bunny, all right? You just lost one. That's one arm off the trust bunny for you. This isn't the time. <laughs> so it looks like the Gangrel are going to side with Anita on this whole war, this turf. I expect casualties and I expect blood within a week. We need more allies on the Camarilla side. The Bano Hakim have been playing on the fence for a while now. I'm leaving it up to you. Get a hold of them. You really won't leave that up to us? I'll have Alan. I'll have someone get a hold of you. Give you the fucking files. I don't know. All I know is get them to start coming to the cam and do it now. You notice that Kevin turns and walks. You watch as he walks. He takes his fist and plants it in the wall. You see it just put a massive dent as he punches it and walks off. Wow. There's a lot of really anger like in that. here tonight. He doesn't normally act that way. Um, Alistair's really, uh, really doing a number on him, apparently. Usually it's Memphis is the only person to get people that mad. Yeah, I can understand that. Meanwhile, outside, you see Ad's black window. You see the window rolls down. You can see Ad's eyes gleaming in the darkness inside as he notices that he rolls the window down about halfway and goes, My grown, Kindred. Come on, get inside. All right. Yeah. I'll go ahead and jump in there. Oh, we have a foster clock. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like, was it just me or was the energy in there just not, not normal? I figured I set the mood to, like, build up for a great night. And then... 
You did fine. Yeah. Trust me. Uh, and the Anarchs? Uh, you know, so. Ezerly sits sitting across from him as Ad smokes on his clove cigar. You can smell the rich scent permeating throughout the limo cabin. This is what we've been waiting for. Now we can make our move here in the city. Yeah. Wait, what? What move? Which one? The blood disco still set to perform. Right, but that's about bringing people together. <gasps> so we use the blood disco to dirty dance our way into making the Camarilla and the Anarchs get along and join together and create Memphonites? <laughs> no. Young blood, you don't understand. We have an army of the lost that need a general. Right. You're gonna be my general. Me? Yeah! Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. With the Camarilla and the Anarchs at each other's throne, we can unite the kindred. There is no clans. No factions, just us. Yeah. Kindred, kind, werewolves, vampires, <laughs> all of all of the races coming together. I like your spunk. Yeah. But what I don't like is you don't seem to be understanding my initiative. Oh, uh, my bad. Sorry. Explain your initiative, and then I'll know. His hand comes out and grabs you by the shirt. You see him yank you close to his face. You hear the sound of a switchblade. As he places it up to your cheek, and you feel it cut into your cheek as his tongue comes out. I'm not someone to fuck with. Of course not. And you've been fucking me for too long now. You're trying to play many sides. You need to pick one. you either with me and the mother of mothers. Or you're against us. Well, I'm definitely not against you. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. You know, see, switchblade. Get the fuck out of my limo. Good scene, you ads. Uh, have a good night. I'm gonna shut the thing and be like, oh man. As you get out, you notice Bennett standing outside. Bennett, smoking a cigarette, looks towards you and goes, hey man, come on, we'll give you a ride. All right, yeah, yeah, that, that, that'd be great walk over and you notice that he gets in the car looks like he's driving a pretty nice Cadillac and uh, as he gets in and turns the car on he puts his hands on the wheel fuck man that was some intense shit in there yeah wait are you talking about the limo or the in, in there this night's been pretty intense Talk about what happened in court. Oh, yeah. 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 But you know, traveling will do that to ya. He's been all over the place, so. I mean, was it extreme for him to cause a little war between the Camarilla and the Anarchs? Yeah, but uh, I'm sure he'll, he'll make amends tomorrow. Tomorrow night. He knows he starts driving. Hey, where do you want me to drop you off at? I'm going to give him the uh, address to my new apartment. Listen. I want to talk to you about something personal. I feel like I can trust you. Right, yeah. Listen, Ads has been digging in on you. He's got pretty good grasp of what you've been up to. And I got to say, man, I, I found out some shit about you I didn't even know. Like, I had to know about you and your mother. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. I know that she's sick, and I just want to let you know that I know where you're coming from. My mom's in the early stages of Parkinson's. Oh, Bennett. Man. Listen, I know you, you're strange and you're weird, but honestly, I kind of put it off as, like, you're on some Kanye shit, and you're just thinking on a different level. Thank you. But I'm gonna be quite frank with you. I'm fucking scared of ads. He scares the shit out of me. I respect the man, but he's terrifying. Francois, Ezerly, the Blood Disco, man, they're into some weird shit. I don't know if I can get behind it. I'm not as old as them, man. I'm, I'm like. I feel like I'm like you. Sometimes I wake up and I still feel more human than I do fucking vampire. You know, even just saying vampire, it's ingrained into us. I mean, kindred. We're fucking vampires, man. We drink fucking blood. We come out at night. We're vampires. I don't want this for my mother. I'm not going to turn her. I'm gonna let her live and die as a human. I've gotta find a purpose. And right now I feel like I'm in a rock in a fucking hard place because Ads is breathing down my neck. And then we got Alan Sovereign and the Ventru. They're trying to buy out red number five from us. I haven't told Ads about it, but man, the deal is it's fucking tempting. I mean, it's real tempting. I don't know what to do. I need allies, and I'm... At this point, I can't trust them anymore. Bennett, Bennett, Bennett. I understand. There there was a season where I felt... I felt very similar, my guy. Especially trying to keep up with all these politics, these rules. Like, pretending to have a society and pretend like we're not monsters, but... I mean, we are, but... At the same point, we were given a gift. And sure, yeah, the Camarilla has all these games and hoops they have us jump through, but anytime I start thinking it's too much, or anytime I start to question if it's worth it, I always remember what one man says. Bob Marley, and everything is gonna be all right. So better just hang out there. Just hang in there for a little bit longer. Because the future, though we are at night, will be bright. I appreciate the optimism. I really do. Honestly. I, mean, I haven't had an easy life. And being, being this isn't even easier. But I've met someone... And now I got my girls and, you know, I like my ladies and, but there's one girl and she's just different. Yeah. You got to hold that tight. Hold on to her. No matter what, any decision you make. That's that's the problem, man, is, uh, it's one of Ezra Lee's, um, fashion designers. Her name's Bianca. Me and her have got something real special going on. We've been seeing each other, and I want to I wanna be with her. And I even maybe want to embrace her. But Ezra Lee doesn't approve of it. She's already said that if I even try to make a move, she'll put an end to it real quick. Well, why don't you just leave? Man, red number five is all I got. So get something else. Where else do I go? Right now... I don't know. Leave Chicago. And go where? Uh, uh... Go to where? Go to California? Go to an anarch free state? No, fuck that, man. It's gonna be the same bureaucratic bullshit. Well, then, uh, I don't know. Go live in the woods like the the gangrels. Do I look like a fucking gangrel? I don't know. I'm just... 
I, I'm just coming up with ideas. If you care about the girl, then you do anything you can for that. Make no, it I work. don't think she's going to be real happy living as Crocodile Dundee. Well, after you embrace her, she won't mind as much. <laughs> Man, maybe this was a mistake talking to you. Why? Why does everyone... I give people great advice. You just told me to live in the fucking woods with a woman in my dreams. I told you to... You have a problem, and I told you how to solve it. Now check out the beat while my DJ revolves it. All right? Bennett, I am a solution man. And if this girl means so much to you, then you can't do anything. Because living forever with regret is worse than taking a risk that might get you killed. Man, well, I'll think about it, and uh, I'm definitely gonna pass on living in the wilds. But um, just, just think about it. Just think about it. I'll say this: if um, you don't mind, hey, don't worry. Mom's the word. Can I count on you if I need help? If I need someone to run to, can I count on you? Yes. Bye, right, man. Hey, thank you for the ride. Yeah, as he stops his car and... You have a good night, man. You too. As you close the door, yeah. notice that he peels off. You head into your apartment. Or, unless you have somewhere else you want to go. The night is early. It is early. So I must dress. Oh. I'm going to run upstairs. I'm going to put on the outfit. Okay, you're going to go put on your vigilante outfit. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, my God. Meanwhile, <laughs> back to Elysium. Three of you have just left now that Kevin has told you that you need to get a hold of the uh, Banu Hakim. Essentially, is charging you guys with uh, getting them on board permanently for the Camarilla here in the city. Well, I wouldn't be in the leader of you, and I already got some shit to do. Imagine that. Welcome yeah. to our coterie. I hope you enjoy your stay. Yeah. Remember, it always starts small, but it gets real big. Yeah, it's going to be like a mountain on your back before yeah. too long. Yep. It already feels but like a mountain. if you treat us nice, we will help alleviate that burden. Or we'll, we can make it more we'll, difficult for we'll you. Only, we'll make it more difficult. We'll only implicate you just a little bit. Listen... Um, I know she'll be doing this whole Banu Hakim thing, but um, my stupid piece of shit grandsire is telling me I have to do something for the Malkavian clan also. So maybe we can, like, knock two birds down with one stone. You know, that honestly isn't half a bad idea. Do they go inside? Like, do they... I don't know. Okay, that definitely helps. Thanks. I don't know where we're going. What are we doing? I don't know either. Okay. Anybody know anything about the Bon What are we doing? I'm going to um, see if Sierra's around. You look around. You haven't been able to see Sierra, but you do notice that Kaido is still there. Kaido looks towards the three of you. I'll figure out what's going on with the Bon And uh, if I figure out anything, I'll send you guys word. Okay. You guys go figure out what's going on with whatever Malkavian business that... Raymond. How do I find out where he even lives or where he already is? I'll send you wherever he's at, too. I think we have that on record. He's what? I'll send you a payment. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Kaido. Yeah. And uh, as of right now, stay the fuck away from Alistair. I wouldn't mm -hmm. touch him with a 10-foot pole. Yeah. Might be difficult for me since I work with him. Or for him. Yeah. I don't know how that's going to play out. No eye contact. Act yeah. like you don't see him, he'll leave you alone. Cool. Right. Sounds like you need to get information on too. If you're gonna work with him, and that's clearly not who you say it is, maybe you can figure something out. Cufflinks. I can't fucking believe it. Cufflinks. What they look like? Oh my god, were they pearl? I don't know. I just said he wears wearing cufflinks. It's weird. I know it's weird, but trust me, he had a 30-minute rant about how cufflings are stupid. Yeah. I've heard him talk about it before. 
All right, all right, all right. Let's let's just go. Let's go ahead. Who's driving? You have a car. I have a car. What about Memphis? Where's he at? He had to... important business to go take care of. He does that a lot. Um, welcome. Another fact about this coterie is Memphis is gone a lot, doing Memphis things, and we don't question it because then we are implicated, and we don't want yes. that. He, he's the one that's going to get everyone in trouble, probably. Because out of everything, if the whole group is implicated in that, um, Memphis is not getting in trouble because Kevin Jackson. I don't know if you knew this or not. Kevin Jackson's his dad. He'll tell you he's not, but we all know better. He'll get out of trouble. We won't. So, whatever he's doing, good luck to him. Let's go. Jamie didn't tell me to treat him like the golden child. I don't really want to That's do that. Why. Do it. But now, yeah, you got like it. everything else. I don't yeah. have a choice. Yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. Um, oh my god, on the drive there, we can like uh, play some sort of like getting to know you game, an icebreaker game. We could do that. I like games. Let's do that. Sure. Glad this turned around since uh, we tried to have a conversation before. Mm hmm. You know, Oh, I'm very up and down. Um, I might yell at you again. We'll see how I'm feeling. Fine, <laughs> by me. Let's, as long as as long as we can make this work, I think we can be okay. At least for a little bit. And as the three of you head out to leave the Succubus Club, we cut back to Memphis. Oh, fuck. Memphis, could you go ahead and explain your your outfit? All right. Instead of glasses, I've shattered the glasses. I have a full. A uh, ski black ski mask that I co uh, covers my face. Then I have a long tactical turtleneck with black gloves, reminiscent of Alistair's murder gloves. Working my way down, I have tactical cargo black pants and black sneakers with a cape. Okay. <laughs> Putting it all together, I am Chicago's Black Knight. That as you put that on... And you oh, I also have the katana. Freckles? Freckles. No, not freckles. Uh, a new one? Yeah. My, uh, my bone one. Freckles is a little... You uh, summon... Yeah. Your bone katana yeah. into your hand. And as you do, and you look at yourself into the mirror, and you see your reflection in your full outfit, your black ski mask, your black turtleneck and gloves with your cargo pants, tactical boots, and black cape, you look at yourself and all you hear is that voice in your head. We look fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, we do. All right. Let's go. Let's go. And as you open the door to head outside, we cut to somewhere in another scene. I can't believe you've done this. Looking over the city skyline, glass planed windows, rooms dimly lit, dark. That same conference boardroom where that tank was revealed inside of the two part finale. You see Jacques standing, looking out the window. Is it done? Yes. It looks like our test subject performed perfectly. Word from Felix is the war is a go. Good. And soon I will see this skyline fill with fire, and I will watch as it comes crumbling down into piles of ash, and we will bask and revel in its glory. I will make Chicago fair in comparison. Carthage, even. I will salt this earth. And that is where tonight's episode ends. Damn. So, thank you all for joining us for episode one. You have to answer. Independence. <laughs> we will be, of course, returning uh, next week 
as there is no set number to the length of this Ooh. season. So I have a ending, a finale, essentially planned as we move forward. However, it will be up to the players to uh, move through the plots for this season. The may take as little or as much time as they wish to move through that plot. But regardless, there are many, many things to come tonight and the nights to come in Chicago by night. Thank you all. And remember to always embrace the dark. Good night.